So thanks for joining me to listen to my lecture 2.3 regarding the particle nature of light in our chapter 2 descriptions of light. So this will be a very, very short lecture, so I won't be providing you any further motivation or introduction. I will just start going through the main message, and the main message is that at some point the quantum mechanical effects and the quantum mechanics starts to become important in the light matter interaction. So in the description of what happens when light hits a material. And in this case, the particle nature of light really must be taken into account. So what this means is that, the, for example, in the light matter interaction, we may no longer be able to describe what happens using waves and an electromagnetic radiation, but rather we should take use of a concept of photon and we should really quantize the, the radiation so that they, it's not just a classical field quantity anymore. Of course, it will be a field, field quantity, but they, they just uh, there will be differences in the properties. So it has a quantized nature, so to speak. And in these cases, like uh, we just don't, cannot use a, a classical field to describe light. So then instead we describe light as a quantized particle or a bunch of quantized particles. And, and these particles, of course, they are known as, as photons. So this is what happens in our description. And, and, and this is, this is <clears throat> how things go. And then each photon is associated with a given energy. And this energy E is known and can be easily calculated that they either using the concept of frequency, so nu or f, and then uh, frequency times the Planck constant h gives us the energy of a single photon. Or if we are using the concept of angular frequency omega, then we multiply that with the reduced Planck constant, so the h bar parameter. So h bar, this is defined as the, the Planck constant h divided by 2 pi, and this is known as the reduced Planck's constant. In case you are having a trouble to remember like a, what's a normal Planck constant and what's called as a reduced Planck's constant, a few years back, oh, shame, I'm ashamed, ashamed to admit, but it only just took me a few years in the, in, in the, the history, uh, in the, in the, into the past, that I realized that the, this is actually the meaning of the reduced, or can be the meaning of the reduced, but the, we divide h with the 2 pi, so this h bar is actually less in value than the actual Planck's constant, so it makes really sense to be describing it and then calling it a reduced Planck's constant. So this is my way of remembering how this h bar is being defined. Maybe it works also for you, maybe it doesn't, but at least it's good to remember that there are these two different kind of Planck's constants, and then basically they differ by this 2 pi uh, uh, variable. Sorry, 2 pi integer. Mm. <clears throat> so the energy, as we see from the equations, it's proportional to the frequency. So if we look at an individual photon, depending on the color of the photon, then the slight changes exist in the energy, amount of energy this photon carries. And this is really important, this concept of photon, when we, for example, would be describing weak light sources. So, for example, like a, a laser, when it's starting its operation, and if you really want to understand also for how a laser works, really, it really should form a quantum mechanical description. So, in this description, the concept of photon is very, very important. So, in essence, the kind of the, the light matter interaction that takes place, we really also need to take into account the fact that the, we, we have a material system that is quantum mechanic in nature, and somehow we should take this into account to understand how, how the interaction takes place. So there also it's quite natural to use the concept of photon to understand what happens. So that they kind of like a photon carries a single quanta of energy and, and so forth. And when we are thinking of other occasions where the concept of photon is quite useful and often arises, we can also think of uh, individual atoms individual molecules that are fluorescent, so they emit light. So in these cases, 
for example, it's easy to imagine that a single piece of a atom can only emit a single piece of a photon at a time. So then, then this, this level of description becomes more appropriate. But in this course, we really, most of the time, neglect the quantum nature of light entirely. We do a little bit treat the, the matter quantum mechanically in, in very simplistic terms when we are wanting to understand how a laser behaves. But in terms of propagation of light and, and, and behavior of light, we really neglect the quantum nature of, of, of light at all. So this is the kind of like a starting point that you could remember. In, in the follow-up courses, we will be dealing more with the, the quantum nature of light, so-called non-classical light sources and non-classical light, but not, not here. And of course, if you would go into more advanced courses, let's say like a, on a course of solid-state physics, there it's more natural to not deal with the classical fields, but rather with these kind of quantities, because most of the time we are really interested in understanding how a single piece of energy quanta is being transferred and inside the, the solid piece of a material under question. So this is my quick, quick lecture on this topic. So um, the main message here is that they please remember that there is this wave particle duality of light so that they, depending on the context, you either should be treating the light electromagnetic radiation as a wave but in other instances, it's better to treat it as a particle. And depending on the context, like you know, either way, other emphasis of, of the kind of treatment is, is easier and, and more easily results in the correct uh, result than the other. And most of the time here in this course, the wave nature is perfectly adequate. So thanks for listening and please join me when we will be covering the, the chapter 3 regarding wave motion. So we will be there, there developing more of the mathematics that helps us to understand light and, and propagation of light. So thanks and bye bye.